Welcome back to Brain Omega. This is NLP tutorial part 4, and today we're building a practical sentiment analysis pipeline tailored to travel and hostile text. Short reviews, booking style chats, and social posts. We'll focus on Vader, the valence aware dictionary and sentiment reasoner, because it works directly on raw text where punctuation, casing, emojis, and even exclamation marks matter. That makes it a perfect fit for informal travel content. In this session, you'll learn how to score individual sentences and full data sets, then convert those scores into positive, neutral, negative labels using sensible thresholds. We'll roll up results by property, hostel, and by channel, booking, hostel site, X or Twitter, and build quick visualizations to understand sentiment distributions and property level KPIS at a glance. Along the way, we'll call out how Vader handles negation, not great, emojis, happy face, angry face, and domain terms common in travel. By the end, you'll have a reusable end-to-end -end sentiment workflow. Load real-world text, score it with Vader, label it cleanly, aggregate and visualize trends, and generate insights you can act on whether that's improving guest experience, monitoring channels, or tracking reputation across properties. First, we'll install the dependencies we need for this notebook. The command pip install vader sentiment pandas, matplotlib pulls in vader for sentiment scoring, pandas for data handling, and matplotlib for quick charts. In Colab, the leading exclamation mark runs this as a shell command. Locally, you'd run the same pip install in your terminal. After that, we import the libraries, pandas for data frames, matplotlib.pyplot for plotting, and sentiment intensity analyzer from Vader, which is the tool that actually computes sentiment scores. We also set a small pandas display option so long text, like full reviews or social posts, doesn't get truncated in the notebook. When you see setup complete, it just means everything is installed and imported, and we're ready to start analyzing sentiment. We'll kick things off with a small, realistic data set that looks like what you'd actually collect from booking sites and social platforms. Each row is one text entry with four columns, date in YYYY-MM-DD format, property name, the hostel, channel, where the text came from, hostel world, Google reviews, Instagram, X slash Twitter, etc., and text, the raw message will analyze. Notice we're keeping emojis, punctuation, and casing. That's intentional. Vader reads those signals, exclamation marks, all caps words, not, plus adjective, emojis like face with smiling eyes or face with angry eyes. They all nudge the sentiment score in meaningful ways. This starter dataset gives us a bit of variety. Clear positives, rooftop vibes, friendly staff, mixed feedback, great location but noisy AC, strong hype posts, all caps plus fire emojis, service issues, late check-in, cold showers, and value comments, clean kitchen, comfy beds, nice views. It's perfect for demonstrating how a rules-based model reacts to tone, emphasis, and negation across different channels and properties. In practice, you can swap this out for your own CSV, just make sure you preserve raw text and keep a date and property column so we can aggregate by time and by hostel later. Pro tip, parse date as a date time type for easy grouping and keep the channel column so you can compare patterns across booking versus Google versus social. With this data frame in place, we're ready to score sentiment and turn these messages into actionable KPIS. Before we score a whole data set, let's understand what Vader returns. For any piece of text, Vader gives a small dictionary with four keys, neg, nu, and pose, which are the proportions of negative, neutral, and positive signal it detected, and compound a single overall score between minus 1 and plus 1. In practice, compound is the one to watch. It combines everything, including punctuation, all caps, emojis, and negations, 
into one sentiment number. The Vader authors suggest simple, sensible thresholds for labeling. Compound greater than or equal to 0.05, positive. Compound less than or equal to negative 0.05, negative. Otherwise, neutral. These work well out of the box, but you can tune them for your domain if you find the labels too strict or too loose. In the code, we create an analyzer with sentiment intensity analyzer, grab a sample text from our data frame, and call polarity scores sample. That returns the four key dict described above. Printing the original text alongside the scores is a great sanity check. You'll quickly see how exclamation marks, words like not, and emojis shift the compound score up or down. To make the notebook reusable in real projects, we'll wrap Vader scoring and labeling in two small clean utilities. The first, get compound, takes a raw text string and returns Vader's compound score from minus one to plus one. We deliberately pass the raw text as is, no lower casing or emoji stripping, because Vader uses punctuation, all caps, emojis, and negations to detect tone. The function accepts an optional underscore analyzer, so you can inject a shared analyzer, useful for testing or parallelization, and otherwise falls back to the global analyzer. The second helper, label from compound, turns that numeric score into a human-readable label using Vader's default thresholds. Scores greater than or equal to 0.05 map to positive, scores less than or equal to negative 0.05 map to negative, and everything in between is neutral. These cutoffs are solid defaults, but treat them as knobs. Tighten them if you want fewer positives, negatives, more neutrals, or loosen them if you want stronger polarity calls. With these two functions, the rest of your pipeline becomes simple and readable. Compute a compound score per row, map it to a label, then group by property slash date slash channel for KPIS and charts. In production, you can vectorize this over a pandas series, dftext.apply get compound, and cache the analyzer so scoring stays fast. Now let's run our helpers across the whole data frame. We take the text column and apply get compound to compute Vader's overall sentiment score for each row. That becomes a new compound column with values between minus one and plus one. Next, we map those scores to labels using label underscore from compound, creating a sentiment column with positive slash neutral slash negative. This keeps the numeric signal for analysis while giving you an easy, human-readable tag for dashboards and filters. At this point, you can quickly sanity check a few rows to see if the labels match your intuition. For example, emojis and exclamation marks pushing reviews positive, not, plus complaint pushing them negative. Pro tip, if you plan time-based charts later, convert date to a date time, pd dot to underscore date time, so you can group by day slash week slash month and roll up sentiment trends by property and channel. With scores and labels in place, we can turn raw reviews into actionable KPIS. First, we group by property name and compute the average compound score for each hostel. This gives a quick sortable leaderboard of overall sentiment. Higher means guests generally feel more positive about that property lower points to potential issues. Sorting in descending order surfaces your best performing hostels at the top while those near the bottom may need attention. This single metric is great for dashboards and weekly reports. You can pair it with volume, number of reviews, to distinguish a truly strong signal from a small sample. Averages are useful, but sometimes you need more granular insight into sentiment. Here we group by both property name and sentiment, then count how many reviews fall into each category. Using dot size gives raw counts and dot unstack fill value equals zero pivots. The sentiment labels into their own columns, so you get one row per property with counts for positive, neutral, and negative. Resetting the index makes it a clean data frame you can inspect or export.
This distribution is powerful for understanding the shape of feedback. For example, two hostels might have the same average score, but one could be mostly positive with a few negatives, while the other might be split evenly between love and complaints. This breakdown helps you see if sentiment is consistently strong, polarized, or drifting toward neutral. In practice, you can extend this to include channels too, so you can compare how a hostel performs on Google reviews versus social posts versus booking platforms. Just like we did for properties, we can roll up sentiment by channel to see where guests are happiest or most critical. Here we group by the channel column, compute the mean compound score for each source, and then sort the results in descending order. The output shows an average sentiment score per channel, giving you a quick snapshot of how different platforms compare. This is especially useful because tone often varies by channel. Booking sites may lean more neutral and factual, while social media posts tend to be more extreme, either very positive, hype, emojis, all caps, or strongly negative when people vent. Tracking channel averages helps you understand not just what people feel, but where they express it most strongly, which is key for prioritizing marketing and guest engagement efforts. Let's turn our channel KPIS into a quick visual. This bar chart plots each channel on the x-axis and its average Vader compound score on the y-axis, so you can instantly see which platforms skew more positive or negative. Rotating the X labels keeps things readable and tight layout prevents overlaps. Read it like a leaderboard. Taller bars mean happier tone on that platform. Shorter or negative bars point to places where feedback tends to be more critical. This simple view helps you prioritize where to focus, celebrate the channels with strong sentiment, and investigate what's driving weaker scores on others. Now let's visualize property level sentiment. Each bar represents a hostel, and the bar height is its average Vader compound score across all reviews. Higher bars mean guests generally feel more positive. Lower or negative bars suggest issues worth investigating. Rotating the labels keeps long property names readable, and tight layout prevents overlap. How to use this chart? Treat it like a scoreboard. Celebrate the top properties. What are they doing right? Staff, cleanliness, events. For properties near the bottom, drill into recent reviews to spot recurring themes. Check-in delays, noise, cold showers, etc. Pair this view with review counts to distinguish a strong trend from a small sample and consider slicing by channel or time, for example, month over month, to catch shifts early. ADER isn't just counting positive and negative words, it reacts to how people write. This quick test runs a few travel-style sentences through the analyzer to show three important behaviors, negation, emojis, and emphasis. Phrases like didn't like flip the tone of what follows, so you'll see the compound score drop even if the adjective itself is positive. Emojis such as face with smiling eyes or face with tears of joy shift scores in the expected direction. Hype emojis like fire and exclamation marks add intensity, often pushing already positive lines further up. All caps words, for example, amazing, are treated as stronger emphasis too. You'll also notice Vader can handle mixed sentiments in one sentence, amazing beds but cold showers, by balancing the positive and negative parts. And a classic subtlety, not bad, usually lands slightly positive rather than neutral or negative. Printouts of polarity scores make this visible at a glance, so you can calibrate expectations and adjust labeling thresholds if needed. Pro tip, Vader does well on informal text but won't catch sarcasm reliably. For channels heavy on irony, review edge cases or complement with human checks. Ready to run this on your own reviews? All you need is a CSV with at least a text column, the raw messages you want to analyze. If you have them, include optional columns like date, property name, channel, and rating so you can group by time, roll up KPIS per hostel, compare platforms, 
or sanity check sentiment against stars. The tiny example shows the expected layout. One row per review, with the text kept as is, emojis, punctuation, and casing included, so Vader can pick up tone and emphasis. In Colab, upload your file, point pd.read underscore csv to its path, and then apply our helpers. Compute the compound score for each row and map it to a sentiment label. A quick dot head lets you verify everything looks right before you move on to aggregations and charts. Pro tips, convert date with PD dot to date time if you plan time series plots, and if your file isn't UTF-8, pass encoding equals, for example, UTF-8 sig. That's it. Swap in your CSV, and you've got a drop-in sentiment pipeline for your own travel data. Here are some practical tips to make this workflow production ready. First, keep the raw text for Vader. Don't strip emojis, punctuation, casing, or exclamation mark. Those cues carry real sentiment signal. Second, tune the label thresholds if your domain is skewed. For example, hospitality often leans positive. Tightening or loosening the cutoffs can reduce false positives slash negatives. For longer reviews, score per sentence and aggregate, mean, median, or even max to capture standout emotions. Consider hybrid setups, use Vader for fast, robust polarity, and complement it with lightweight ML classifiers to detect domain themes like cleanliness, Wi-Fi, or check-in experience. Put the results on a time axis, weekly or monthly KPIS per property and channel, to spot declines early and act before they snowball. And always spot check a small sample, especially edge cases like sarcasm or mixed sentiment, so you can calibrate thresholds and set realistic expectations with stakeholders.